All right, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> See, I listen to you folks. I listen, okay? So before this purchase right here, I thought I'd be clever and I got myself the M1 Max and I also got myself the M1 Pro, but I did it in such a rush when I first heard about them on the day of the event that the Pro is a double binned version, right? So this is the eight core CPU with uh, what is it? 14 core GPU. And my Max is a 10 core CPU and a 32 GPU. So some of the tests I've been doing here, we're comparing these two machines and uh, the CPU intensive tasks, especially that, uh, that Mandelbrot test and maybe even the Xcode builds might have suffered because of that. I figured this would make a more fair comparison. I ran a poll here on the channel and most of you, well, not most of you, a lot of people voted for Schwarzenegger for some reason. Maybe that means you just don't care. Maybe for you, that's not important, but for some people, it is important to compare 16 inch versus 16 inch, which is what this one is. And also M1 Max versus M1 Pro. And both of these now have 10 core CPU. So we're gonna be doing some comparisons on this machine as well, but uh, it takes a little bit of time to set this up. So today I'm gonna pop this open, but we're gonna be doing a slightly different test today. We're gonna be doing the M1, which is a very much requested test by all of you folks the MacBook Air M1 versus the 14 inch M1 Pro. Yes, the bin variety. However, comparing that to the M1 makes perfect sense because it's supposed to be a more powerful machine. So we'll see the difference. Let's pop this baby open now and then we'll continue with the test. Ah! I'm sorry. Let's just do this quickly. Ah, ah! Sorry about that. I don't want to hurt you. Ah! 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 Okay. There's the specs for those of you that are interested. Gonna put this one aside. Well, might as well open it, right? Let's see if they gave me the actual machine inside. Aha, uh -huh. yes. And I haven't done an official uh, unopening or unboxing, whatever they call it on YouTube. So there you go, you've seen it. It looks just like the other ones. Now I'm gonna get confused as hell. All right, putting this away for now. Gonna install Xcode on that and that's gonna take a day or so. Ah, MacBook Air M1. We've been through a lot in the past year. Let's see what you've got. Now, I do believe that this is still an amazing machine for most developer tasks out there. And I think I've talked about this before. If you're doing mobile development, then you might want a little bit more power. It depends on what kind of mobile development you're doing. If you're doing iOS only, you might be able to get away with that. But if you're doing Android, then you're gonna need a lot more power than the M1 provides. And if you're doing cross-platform development, you might need a little bit more than that. But if you're doing web development and that's all you're doing, and you're doing JavaScript front ends, the M1 MacBook Air is perfectly fine for that purpose. And I've also mentioned why I'm testing the M1 MacBook Air instead of the M1 MacBook Pro. I don't think the MacBook Pro has uh, much benefit over the Air. And if I were to recommend a machine that's M1 and not the newer M1 Pro or the M1 Max, I would go with the M1 MacBook Air. Hope that wasn't confusing. I'm confused. Here we go. We've got three of these machines here and we're gonna be doing an Xcode benchmark first, since that's the most popular requested test that I do on these machines. By the way, this is mostly for the benefit of comparing the M1 to these machines. I've done these two machines separately in a separate video. So if you're just interested in the M1 Pro versus the M1 Max, go check those videos out. If you're interested in the MacBook Air M1, then keep watching, because I don't know who's gonna win this one either. We'll see. All right, I'm all set up. It's silicon versus silicon, baby. We've got the M1 MacBook Air, it's at 35 degrees Celsius, no fans of course. We've got the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, 40 degrees Celsius, and the M1 Max, 42 degrees Celsius. Both uh, MacBook Pros have their fans off. 
and a lot of you ask me what program do you use to measure the fans and control the fans and see the temperature of each CPU. Pretty cool little program, check it out. It's called TG Pro. Now, they are not sponsoring this or anything, but I do have an affiliate link down below if you want to purchase it and support this channel. Same price to you, but I get a little commission if uh, you buy it through that link. I like this little program. What we're using today is the good old Xcode benchmark from Maxim Yeremenka. Thanks, Maxim, for putting that program together. It's come in really handy to do these benchmark tests. And for those of you that are interested in running this on your own, you can go to this GitHub URL right here, which I'll link down below. And you have all the results there from previous runs. And it tells you a little bit about this program, which includes 42 popular CocoaPod libraries and 70 plus dependencies in total. So it does take a couple minutes to build. And it's a nice little test. Now, if you wanna see a huge test that I've done before, a much bigger project is WebKit that I've also built with Xcode. Check out that video that's uh, also on this channel. Let's go. So there's a handy little script called Benchmark. And uh, when I run this script, it actually kicks off Xcode on the command line. You could of course open up Xcode itself, the workspace, and build it that way. But this handy script does it in the command line. It also prints out the time for us. So I'm gonna try to press this with, uh, how am I gonna press this? I don't have three hands, I wish I did. I'm gonna press the middle one with my nose. All right, ready, go. I think that worked. All right, we'll be back with the results. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise. Actually, I'm not surprised at all, but the M1 Max is done already. And this is pretty close to the time that I've been getting so far with this test. And now the M1 Pro is done, so we are waiting for the M1, M1 to finish the MacBook Air. As far as temperatures go, uh, M1 Max is at 58, M1 Pro is at 63, and the M1 Air is at 93 right now. So this one's heating up quite a bit. And even though the M1 is a ton faster than the Intel machines, it's not as fast as these new machines. So we finished at 138 seconds on the Air and just for the heck of it, I am gonna run this test one more time. I'm not gonna press it with my nose, folks. Don't worry, I know that it spits out the time, so we don't need to do that. That was just a little bit of fun. Let's do one more test just to make sure that that result is not a fluke. I'll be right back. Oh, this is the fastest time I've gotten so far on the M1 Max. I've never seen it this fast. I've done this test like 10 or 20 times already. Yeah, somewhere in between there. I lost track, honestly. But 88 seconds on that one? Wow, 88 seconds. That's pretty good. 108 on the M1 Pro. So both of the newer machines are done. Waiting for the M1 Air to finish. It's at 99 degrees, so it's in the orange. These two are still cool. Well, they're warm, I should say, but the CPU is not that hot. It's 61, 63 over here, and this one's at 94 right now. So there could be some throttling going on because of the temperature of the M1, and it doesn't have a fan, so it might do a little bit of throttling there. All right, we're done now at 1.39. So these times are pretty consistent relative to each other and relative to themselves. Therefore, we're gonna call this a day. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it if you give me a like for this video, if you found it useful or entertaining, especially me pressing the nose on the keyboard part. Come on, gotta get something for that. And if you want more tests like this one, uh, make sure that subscribe button turns gray. That's the correct color. If it's red, push it and it'll turn gray. And that's, that's gonna be great. So thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you next time.